Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching. Today we've got uh, not one but two examples of deja vu of things that I have worked on and or sold in recent weeks that have had like similar issues or uh, a similar device that I've sold or mower or whatever. So um, first one is a Craftsman rear engine rider and the other one is um, a coil replacement on a tiller which I just did with uh, a yard machines one. And this one I've got a a big craftsman rear time it's got the same problem i'll show you why i know it's a bad coil and i'll show you that craftsman here first but i hope you all enjoy this video again you can reach out to me if you have any questions ellis at ellismowers.com or um, at ellismowers09 on instagram and facebook let's get a quick overview and then uh we're gonna go ahead and get into that tiller on this uh deja vu day so to speak All right, guys. You can see, I've been fairly busy. Accumulated a lot of uh, a lot of mowers here recently, so I'm trying to get things knocked out. That way, I can get them out of here. Um, even working on people's chairs for them. But that's beside the point. We're gonna go over to this Craftsman first. This uh, is not the one that I sold about three weeks ago uh, or a month ago um, that y'all saw on the channel that I said that I was pretty much tired of. This is a different one. I ended up uh, doing a barter deal. I fixed a guy's John Deere F725. Just needed a little, just very, very minor work, but um, I had to do a decent amount of driving for transport, so I got a decent decent money off of it. And uh, I got this as payment. I put a, just a couple bucks toward it, um, and I've got it listed for a couple hundred dollars more than I have in it. So uh, we'll see what happens with it. This thing is super mint, or it's, almost in mint condition really for what it is uh, exactly like the one that I had two weeks ago the guy put new tires on it it runs good it's got a fuel shut off switch he just he, his yard is just way too big for this and uh, I don't know how he got it but he got it in some sort of trade or something along those lines and uh, I mean all the belts are good the blades even good on it uh, it's down there somewhere but um like pretty much all I had to do was put a battery in this thing and uh, do a little bit of a deck adjustment and a transmission adjustment and start it right up. So can't really complain about that. Second thing is uh, this tiller. Remember I had that Yard Machines 5 horsepower tiller that I uh, worked on about a couple weeks ago. Um, Y'all saw it on the channel back in March and had a coil problem. Well, let me show you how I'm testing the coil out on this. And luckily I've got... So this engine runs pretty good. But I needed the pull rope off of it. I'm probably going to rip the coil off of it. And probably need to take the air filter off of it too. In order for everything to to work on uh, this tiller. Because if I can get this tiller going, then it pretty much pays for the whole trade that I did for another tiller. To get this tiller, that tiller, that mower, that deck... A three bin bagger I mean I have a bunch of stuff here for that um, but let me show you so to test this coil out I wasn't getting any spark I tried a different plug and then I'm like okay I'll test the coil out so this coil if you put one lead in on the ohm setting what have I got it on 200,000 ohms on my multimeter and the post on here if I can tilt down, I'll show you that you have let me do this you have on this one you should have like at least like three, four, five, six ohms of resistance depending on the machine we have pretty much, we have point four, <laughs> so uh that will be explaining why we didn't get spark. Let's go over here to this other one. And I'll show you this one. Let's see if I can get it all in one big deal here. Um, can y'all see that? I think you might be able to. We'll put one lead on the... Put one lead on here, one lead on the coil itself here. And you should be able to see that we've got, oops, 
like five ohms. So this is a good coil. I've heard this mower, uh, this tiller, this engine run before. So I'm going to take this coil off. As you can see, it's exactly the same as this one. It's the same engine, almost the same era engine too. Um, bolt on, plug and play. So two five sixteenths are going to take it off. You're also going to have a um, a clip here that you have to unclip in the back for the ground. We'll do that. I'll take I'll take it off and then I'll put it on. I'll take it off the other one. I'll put it on this and we'll see if it'll run after that. I hope it does because that'll be an easy fix. I'll give this a nice clean and probably sell it for about $300 or so. So that'll be super if we could do that. Let me get the tools I need. We'll get rolling. All right, guys. So I got Mrs. Ellis Motors came out and I was just doing it while she was um, here. So anyways, it's really easy once you have this cover off. You take the two 5 16 bolts out. You put the two 5 16 bolts in. You make sure that the gap between the flywheel is roughly the size of a business card. Ten thousandths of an inch if you got a feeler gauge. So you just pop it in like so. Measure your gap in between your flywheel and your coil. This one is proved to be bad because I'll show you why. Woo! All right, so I pulled the chip on this thing and it did a first first try, which is awesome. figure out an air filter situation and figure out the coil wire so I'll go ahead and do that next I have the I have the current wire on here but I don't know don't know how well it works So here it is. I think I might have the gap a little bit too big, but that's what you do. You just pop these two bolts in, screws in easily, and then just gap accordingly. So I've got this uh, um, wire, and I might be able to finagle it to get it under this gas tank up through here come on I don't know Can we get it there it's going to be close I think we got it so what I'm going to do all i got to do really is add add an end that'll clip on here because it's not there's not one right here then we'll get the ground working and then i'll put the pins back in and figure out this air filter might be able to find like a like an air filter for housing from like another brig since the choke is this style and not the auto choke style like is on that engine over there so let me grab my wiring devices and put that on all right, so I got the coil wire in here. Uh, I just put an end on that wire, fed it up. Actually, fed it up through the gas tank to give it enough length. And then I, oh, I did not put it in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, silly me. Let me bend this out just a little bit. Get a little bit more room. But you just want to. I swore I thought I had it in there. Maybe it fell out. Maybe not. I don't know. But. 
and just push it in there it clips we'll get that back on when we put the shroud back on and uh, we should have ground now because it is attached on the other end so let me get the cover back on I'll start it up see if we've got ground and then we'll put the wheels on and see if this thing engages and all that good stuff and we'll give it a nice cleaning figure out an air filter situation here and then we will um, list it I think it's ready to roll all right let's see if this thing will crank and stay running and shut off when it needs to It's grounding itself out somewhere. The only common thing we changed was that coil wire. So, hmm. Let me rip this thing off, back off, and see. See what we got. Kind of unusual. I have to rig up my famous uh, coil fix here. Well, would that work? I don't know. See if it'll run without this. So my thing is the wire might be grounding out somehow. See if it runs now. If so, I'll figure up another way to figure out this coil wire. No, maybe it's just a fluke thing. Spark now. Yeah, 
but we're getting sucking. Let me hook this. Well, yeah, let me throw a little carb spray in here. Let me put the coil back on and see if it, or the coil wire back on and see if it'll run. Maybe it was just a fluke thing there. All right, y'all. So I got it to where it will uh, stop with the coil wire. It was just out of adjustment, and uh, what had happened was it just didn't have enough choke to get going. So what I was doing there earlier was not anything pertaining to it. I did bend that a little bit. I also pushed this throttle cable in just a little bit. And now we've got it to where it's going to uh, start and quit when it needs to. hold it down at the very very bottom but it does work I might adjust it just a little bit more just to get a little bit more throttle out of it but or a little bit more stopping power out of it so let me do that it's really easy I don't know if you can gonna be able to see it we're gonna take it's a 5 16 we're gonna loosen the keeper up a little bit and just push it in some We don't have to go very far. When you tighten it, don't go, don't tighten the daylights out of it. So we'll push it far back. Let's see what we've got here. I don't know how well I'll be able to show you, but I'm looking at this area right here. You'll see a little bit of metal come up. Whenever I throttle it down, throttle it up right there, throttle it down, you'll see that metal come in that area. That's where the kill wire is. So that's what you're looking for. Let me crank it up and see if it'll stop a little bit better now. Oh yeah, that's much better much much better much better all right so to roll it around i had to take these tires and move them around a little bit where are we at here we have, we have like a drive area or like a like i guess that's where we need to be like a drive key a drive key and a roll key I don't know exactly but we're gonna put it on that inner inner one and uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, running and running action here like I said I just gotta put these back in figure out an air filter and we'll be and clean it up look make it look nice and we'll be done with this one all right, guys, I put them shear pins back in for the wheel keys. Uh, let's see how we got drive and all that good stuff now.
right, so I think we've about, I think we've got good enough here. Um, it will not, let's see, in neutral, it will not engage. Looks like the time, oh, this is not an engagement. This is an adjustment for the um, up and down. So it is designed to turn whenever these are going. So it is a direct drive. And I don't know why this belt's on here because it's a friction disc that we're talking about here. So that belt's just chilling. Um, this belt works fine. And I think uh, I'll just figure out this air filter and we should be good. So let me work on that and um, I will get back to you. And uh, you'll, next time you'll see this, it'll be a nice, clean tiller, hopefully. Alright guys, so here is the tiller completely cleaned. Um, I mean, ready to go. Um, older, like I said, it's an older tiller. Um, takes a little bit of uh, turning of the screw here to get the fuel air adjustment right to get it going. But after that, after you get all that, this thing runs pretty good. Reverse works, forward works, all the other basic functions work. Stops when it needs to. Um, like I said, everything seems good, so we're going to roll with it. And I think I figured out, so this is the, this is like the forward gear motion or something along those lines, because this belt does turn whenever you put it in, like a forward gear. So, like I said, I don't know a ton of ton about tillers. All I know is that, that uh, uh, they work <laughs> when with transmissions. This one looks like it has a rubber drive disc, and it looks like forward will allow the belt to expand here. So that you can have a faster speed, possibly, and then you got like a variable, tra variable um, belt here, or something along those lines. I'm not quite sure, but you can see it kind of moves on an arm, and I think when the arm moves back, it allows this friction disc to propel this belt forward, or something along those lines. Um, but everything does work like it needs to. Um, like I said, it is seems like it takes a little bit of finagling with the idle screw to get it to start, but for a 35 year old tiller I mean can't really ask much more So I think the engine is a little bit hurt by um, it potentially being run without an oil air filter for a while. The oil was a little gray whenever I did, whenever I uh, took it out. But y'all know these five horse Briggs, as long as you keep oil in them, um, they're probably going to run forever, truthfully. Um, this one shouldn't be uh, hurt to the point where it's going to be um, used too bad. So. Uh, I will put one bolt in here and uh, I'll go ahead and list it because I'm ready for it to be gone because I've got plenty of other things sitting around that need to get gone as well um, and we'll be sitting in the driveway here and uh, uh, this is one less thing that needs to be here so we'll wrap this video up next all right guys so here here it is um, this was I guess and maybe not the big ticket item for the trade deal that I got for that um, Maxim tiller, the 80s 5 horsepower tiller that I did on the channel. But um, it should make my money back and uh, pay for the trip up there as well as for the value of the uh, tiller that I sold. So that's good. And then that leaves me a riding mower, a second tiller, a bunch of other parts, a bagger, and all that stuff. So I'll make good money off of that. But, um,. I was about to say, this thing is one heavy duty tiller, and I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Uh, it's funny because we had deja vu. We had 
the rear engine rider that I'm looking at right here. It looks exactly like the one I sold about two, three weeks ago. And I've got, we had a one that had a bad coil right here, which I just did a tiller with a bad coil. So um, we had everything going uh, when it come to this. Anyways, thank y'all again for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope y'all learned some stuff. I um, hope y'all enjoy seeing these old tillers still cruising along here. So um, I appreciate it. And um, if you remember, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll catch y'all on the next video. See you then.